Upon this article, as recently doing the rounds regarding Matthew Williams and his time at Givenchy and whether or not he's going to get a contract extension, um, I think it's a little bit of a it's a little bit out of order the article in terms of the question it raises and the assertion that he essentially is doing a bad job because they haven't been able to get confirmation that he's going to get a contract extension. But I think with the way the world is, and again, it sounds like a cop out, but you know the way the world is in general and the changing nature of fashion and you know it being a flipping um, a very somewhat microwavable industry in the first place anyway one minute you're hot next minute you're cold it would make sense for Givenchy to be able to be assessing their options um given the designers who are currently available on the market now given how things are changing the chess moves that need to be made it's probably um it's probably a sound business decision to kind of keep all your you know cards close to your chest in terms of what you want to do going forward but I think just analysing and kind of looking at it just from as a fan from the outside in and seeing what Givenchy was before and seeing what they're doing currently now at the moment and seeing how they're being covered in kind of, you know, the cultural papers and platforms that we have at the moment at the hype piece and the high snob ideas and the vogues and the ideas and all this sort of stuff i think matthew williams has done a pretty decent job to get them back to some levels of cultural relevancy whatever that means to you i think people necessarily didn't care about Givenchy at all um you know post ricardo tishi leaving and you know when the other lady came in um claire something i forgot her name please forgive me um people also didn't care about that too tough i know people are now doing a lot of revisionist history in terms of saying oh we want her back but i do remember the panel's discussions on show studio i do remember reading the comments i do remember people on fashion twitter not really having good words to say or good things to say about her vision of Givenchy, especially because she came after such monumental genre shifting um, mind-bending um, work from Ricardo Tishi stuff that he hasn't been able to replicate at all during his time at Burberry so maybe she was maybe you know she might have been unfairly critiqued but still Matthew Williams considering or, no, or Matthew M Williams considering his background considering he's not formally trained considering his inexperience to do what he's done I think is pretty commendable personally again not all of it hits not all of it is perfect like like most collections out there i think there are only a small selection i think in general fashion personally for me i feel like fashion fans and critics they don't necessarily understand how hard it is to really be one of the main ones like i you know the main main people out there who are really pushing for forward there isn't many of them there's maybe five to ten of them right who are really um you would say designers designers who are really talented who have been gifted who've been given the gift to flip and create clothes and be able to you know um inspire people you know for generations to come and whatnot and copy and have all these you know um copycats come beneath them it's not easy everyone else is basically playing you know for the participation trophy for the most part so if you can go in there being somebody that's pretty inexperienced being somebody that kind of just started from making your own brand in the leaks and being you know a kind of a scene person the bintro stuff the virgil stuff the kind of stuff you know the story with Matthew Williams to do that and then to go into essentially leading a house like Givenchy um you know on your own kind of quote-unquote is a lot do you know I mean and he's been able to do it so far pretty well i think so especially considering he hasn't been given the grace that other people have been given and that kind of goes to another topic i want to talk about again or another thing i want to touch upon before we go talk about the article it's interesting how fashion is quite classless in that way because matthew williams is a very 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 white looking person because he is white right but the kind of treatment he gets from the fashion press and from people in fashion twitter is something you would maybe you have seen from the early days in fashion when Virgil was maybe starting at Louis Vuitton right that kind of um that kind of uh, suspicion that kind of uh, questioning and um, would only kind of apply to people that maybe didn't look like the people that you would describe working at fucking Vogue Paris head office back in the day when Emmanuel Alt like, was there right just all white people they wouldn't really look at someone like a Virgil coming into a place like Louis Vuitton and they wouldn't really hold out any hope because they have a very you know white you know presenting way of kind of looking at things and they're very you know you have to go to a fashion school you have to intern here and when someone comes in with a very unconventional route it kind of just shakes them to their core but i do appreciate the fact that fashion is quite consistent in its hate when it comes to classism because when you come from a certain side of the tracks doesn't matter what you look like they're always going to look down upon you and i think that's what with my films is getting especially considering that he's come from the street where Kanye, Yeezy, Virgil Abloh side of things, right? And that kind of, I think, has kind of somewhat tainted his name and tarnished his name because if he was, if he looked exactly the same, 
but he happened to be one of the assistants at flipping you know because people do a lot somebody that flipping you know was doing a minor job at flipping Celine when Phoebe Philo was there they put that in their flipping bio and all of a sudden it kind of gives them um, a bit of clout that can allow them to get the flipping favour of journalists and stuff and I don't think he's ever had that because obviously he has that kind of mark of the whole been true on him and all that sort of stuff because I think you'd see the same thing if Heron Press if Heron Press went and was offered a job at a fashion house you'd see the same hesitancy and questioning and just mockery of him because he comes from that Bincho, Yeezy, Kanye, Virgil camp it just is what it is and I like the fact that we're seeing that it applies both in terms of your skin color your race and also just in terms of what side of tracks you're from because you're not from this highfalutin um, established kind of poshy places these guys still look down upon you it's absolutely mad and gross and the fact that New York Times is doing their bidding is pretty insane to be honest but the article is just a mad it's just a mad article of just hate in general that's what it looks like um, it's kind of it's like an article that they read, on, they read on purpose to kind of break him right this is the article we're going to put and this this if i'm not mistaken this article was published just before he did his show it's like god damn it man like let me have a time time to just enjoy myself a little bit but anyway it doesn't doesn't matter it's written by a woman called jessica tester Jessica Tester is a hater. Continue. <laughs> Matthew and Williams will, under the right conditions, be open and generous and vulnerable. He will show you his slightly messy bedroom and fix you an iced coffee. And he cold, he cold brewed himself and tell you about his sometimes tortured love life and lean back on his big brutalist couch so that he's silver, so that a silver a sliver sorry of one of his most vulnerable parts of his body, the stomach, um, is torn on the account of his exercise routine, which also described if you like is revealed beneath his fitted white t-shirt. But he will not talk about his contract with Givenchy. Why would would he? Why would he tell you, Jessica, about his contract with Givenchy? Please, please tell me. The private contracts are the divided topic by any designer, um, in any for any designer in Mr. Williams' position. Um, in June 2020, the tattooed all over American millennial and former Kanye West acolyte was appointed creative director of Givenchy, a fashion house best known for Audrey Hepburn's little black dress with pearl image, or as a favorite L, uh, label for A list celebrities. Yes, some people still don't know Givenchy at all founded in 1950 we don't want to care about that they got a good picture of Matthew Williams there on the couch um, today designers appointed at luxury fashion hat brands like Givenchy are typically given three year contracts that is how long Mr. Williams predecessor Claire that's it Claire White Keller famous for designing Meghan Markle's wedding dress famous you know okay stayed in the position if the pattern holds Mr. Williams has less than nine months before his employment officially extended or not again hate um, while every measure is not disclosed revenue by brand, its um, semi-annual financial reports offer a qualitative idea of how much house is doing. In 2021, for example, sales at Mark Jacobs had a highly expressive surge, while Celine, Loewe and Fendi each had a record year. But there has been no mention of sales when it comes to Givenchy's clothing and accessories under the direction of Mr. Williams and Renaud de Lesquine, who became the company's president and chief executive officer a few months ago before Williams' appointment. So they basically said that he's not selling enough that's what they're trying to attribute it to now i would be interested to see that if that's true or not and whether or not he's maybe selling some but not enough that they need to kind of make a noise about it but let's compare his selling record to a lady that everyone's kind of pining for now claire white keller let's get it out there because you know these fashion people are trying to make it seem as if if they return back to this lady who they didn't like in the first place everything would be all right but i think nowadays especially this climate it's just harder to sell clothes it just is what it is so somebody new who not a lot of people know about trying to come into an established house like Givenchy to try and sell clothes um especially considering the weight and the, sh the shadow that somebody like flipping ricardo tishi cast over that flipping brand it's going to take a lot of work mate it's going to take a lot of work it's going to take a lot of work just think about it a lot a lot of work Unless in luxury industry are more clear, Givenchy has underperformed, says Mario Otelli of from the Otelli company. Okay, he probably knows more than I do. Um, Luca Solkov, Sanford C. Burstein, um, whose firm tracks, among other things, how often brands are just continuing. Their product said from the moment the brand has yet to find a winning formula, Givenchy is ranked among the brands... Uh, with the strongest negative momentum according to the firm's research it isn't the disaster but probably a work in progress critics have totally dismissed mr williams work for the Givenchy. opinions have mixed but they rarely present any purely negative there are qualities of the utility golf and sorry golf golf and streetwear meets evening distressed aesthetic that always your own praise like a sharp tailoring and the core cool metal signatures of the accessories is it the co is it the coherency or is the broader vision that is more questioned these pictures of him are really nice though to be honest so these pictures of uh, this person called uh carla hiraldo these pictures are beautiful 
Absolutely beautiful. Mr. Givenchy and the Givenchy headquarters a short walk from his home. Looks fucking beautiful. Um, as such, Mr. Williams' fate has been subject to gossip for at least a year in the industry. So obsessed with momentum and consumption that it's invented its new season pre-4, for example. Much depends on the continued enthusiasm from editors and celebrities and shoppers, even if it takes time to see the financial results from the new leadership. So Mr. Williams and his team have made a plan. On Sunday, the designer will present a runway show for men's and women's clothing held during the afternoon at Parisian Park this is the departure from the first two live audience shows which were highly lengthy and featuring both women's and men's collections I think he's done a good job personally for me from what I've seen there personally um, but obviously people you know in the flipping industry don't necessarily think so did she doesn't really know me says um him look at that great little tattoo on the back of his head there born in chicago and raised in california mr mr williams 36 is self-taught with a resume not built on fashion school or ladder climbing at ateliers but working on production and retail then he created direction for lady gaga and ex-girlfriend and mr west and mr knight he helped co-found dj collective and fellow to future fashion stars virgil abloh and perrin preston um this is somebody who hasn't hankering for a bygone era says mr knight he was trying to do a modern things their project together included a short film set to a heavy metal soundtrack starring the model Laura Stone demonstrating Krav Maga while dressed in high fashion once William drank red wine while being tattooed so he would bleed more allowing Mr. Knight to make a print of the bloody tattoo on a white paper towel in 2015 Williams founded um, 1017 uh, Alix 9SM more commonly known as Alix named from one of his daughters the following year he was financed at the prestigious LVMH prize of young designers doors were opened and like collaboration dropped in 2018 Mr. Williams is known for being a world connected. His first campaign for Givenchy starred famous friends Bella Hadid and Kendall Jenner and Playboy Kyle who starred themselves. He is also well liked. His friends um, often bring up his sweet disposition and good looks though to outsiders he seems to be guarded and barbed. No, because you don't know him. Again, this is this whole thing is full of haters. So his friends that actually know him who spend time around him say he's lovely especially these old fashion people right who don't necessarily throw out compliments about people too easily but then you who don't know him journalists who are trying to basically question whether or not he'll have a job in a couple of months you think he's fucking guarded and barbed of course he is because you're fucking trying to basically get him out of a job but if you ask him he has a lot of other he has a lot of acquaintances but very few close friends you know I'm, like, I'm the same sitting on his canopy and tiered slate coach uh, made by michelle lamia rick owens which requires one to sort of climb in order to sit on it miss williams gazed out at his large terrace with his titanic view of paris this was a major selling point of the apartment he said along with being able to short work from Givenchy. his life in paris was lonely at first he moved in 2020 in the early and isolated pandemic miss williams had always been a nomadic but now he is a newly divorced father alone in a new city with a high pressure job who couldn't easily travel to see his children and his two daughters aged five and eight live in london with their mother and miss williams ex-wife formerly overseas sells via leaks while his teenage son is a previous partner lives in the united states god damn it he's got three kids fucking hell and then what his wife is now with um what's his face blondie mccoy in it fucking brutal the scene isn't it um i think the industry doesn't really know me who i actually am as williams i think that they have an idea of who i am um from photo shoes perhaps from the Givenchy fragrance release earlier this year but i spend all my free time with my family kids and then i work so very much virgil-esque in terms of his approach to life when the girls visit every other weekend william said they tend to uh they tend to strawberry plants in the terrace and he also takes cooking lessons in his life um is if his life sounds quaint bear in mind that he's equally enthusiastic about a water filter machine from japan that he said keeps his blood at a neutral ph amazing it's like three thousand or four five thousand euros but then you never buy water miss new york city which he recently visited for a Givenchy party still feels the same like most to him, like home. The party was on a rooftop in New York's uh, city's new hotel, the Joe, called the Nine Orchid. Though Miss Williams went to Brooklyn after to see a show at a rave venue he likened to our beef and massive club, New York City. It's where Alex started, something he felt the curators of the Met costume industry overlooked when they would, didn't include him in last year's exhibition. Jesus Christ. Interesting. They didn't include Alex in the exhibition, but they put denim tears in there. Hmm. Um, I think not to say Dim is bad but you know it's probably the same sort of level I think sometimes maybe the American forget that I'm American I don't I don't know if there's a younger person in the industry um, that's heading a maison he he said wondering aloud about the ages of Jonathan Anderson and the creative director of Lawyer Bain Demner they're both slightly older than him to archive 
Um, but yeah, the Ricardo stuff. But yeah, I personally think just to kind of close out this, I'm not going to read the entire thing. I personally do think he's being unfairly criticised, and I think weirdly enough, this has kind of led to the kind of backlash you're seeing or the kind of outrage or tailspin that Kanye is kind of going for at the moment because I think he's seen this and basically seen a repeat of what maybe Virgil was going through and if he believes his own conspiracy theory that LVMH somehow caused Virgil to be super stressed out to the point where he developed a cancer that kind of eventually led to his death RIP then maybe he's seeing one of his close friends go through the same sort of thing he doesn't want to get repeated but you know Kanye kind of does stuff like with a sledgehammer it's never soft it's never it's never kind of courteous or anything it's always kind of really aggressive so maybe this is kind of why he's going so crazy but personally considering what Givenchy looked like prior um, to him actually getting in there I think he's doing a pretty decent job I'm not going to lie and I think a lot of the people on fashion Twitter who are criticizing it don't remember just how bad it was under the lady called Claire White Keller I think we are romanticizing Givenchy remembering it's good times under Ricardo Tishi but as we've seen with Ricardo Tishi now that he's at Burberry he's lost the plot completely he's not the same person anymore which I'm actually fascinated to learn why I actually I think I made a comment about it the other day actually on somebody's Instagram about what actually happens to a designer why how does somebody go from making genre bending you know forward thinking fashion that really changed the silhouette of men's fashion forever especially for someone like myself that was watching fashion shows and my interest in them seeing these really you know i would say jack but like way bigger guys than i was used to seeing at highly some men shows the cuts the shapes the feminine the sensitivity the aggression in it the kind of to and throwing what you see with the, with the models and the and the silhouettes and the cuts and stuff it was just amazing what Cartier was doing at Givenchy right and obviously it connected with people like Kanye and Jay-Z and the stuff they did watch her from blah de, blah 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 and then he does and then he goes to Burberry and it just falls flat so clearly this job isn't easy so for somebody like you know um Matthew Williams to come into it as a relative novice not really having experience of working within a fashion house in the first place and be able to put together some coherent collections with some decent pieces in there that are I, I would say on the money and kind of fit what's kind of going on in terms of the cultural zeitgeist I think he's doing a pretty decent job and he has come you know tried his best to kind of pull this house kicking and screaming into the you know 21st century especially culturally wise right they've got kids in there gen z people sitting on front row cool influencers wearing it just on brand on tough stuff like this can this looks like something that you'd see i have a show from diesel from martin sorry um yeah from diesel from flipping um uh glenn martins um, maybe not the same quality but you know the aesthetic is basically the same so the fact that people are dunking on it so much i just feel like it's a little bit it's coming from a place of oh this guy is a streetwear dude he's not you know he's not a tailor he's not from he's not from a fashion school he didn't intern at this brand we don't like him his association with kanye with virgil all that sort of stuff is basically muddying his name but i don't think it's as bad as people say it is he looks really cool here as well by the way in that kind of final shot on the runway there with these um shoes on and that big overcoat but yeah man it's just it's just it's a strange place to be overall with it i really do think it's a strange place to be um and i do hope it kind of works out for him and he does end up getting a contract extension or maybe it just ends up being a thing where he got some good experience from it and then he applies that to Alix and Alix goes from strength to strength because maybe he's also recognizing that maybe the grass is always green on the other side maybe actually having your own brand and be able to do exactly what you want to do and move to the beat of your own drum maybe is the best way to go forward because I actually think weirdly enough especially in the last few collections Alix is maybe returning to some of his past glories because I feel like he's now finally getting his momentum he's finally getting the hang of it of being able to design two, for two different brands at the same time um, not have divisions kind of overlap and stuff it's kind of doing it well and again it's hard to do if someone like Demina can't do it with Veta Mind you know and Balenciaga then you know it's going to be hard for most designers because you know those two brands were you, you would say two sides of the same person in terms of a personality but yeah big up Matthew Williams um, fuck the New York Times hopefully you get a new deal and a new contract because I like the stuff that you do I like the stuff that you do